the Hawaiian Islands have become the proving grounds for the most outrageous sailboarders in the world. The combination of the trade winds, powerful waves, make for ideal conditions. Hawaii is the ultimate competition arena and home of the O'Neill Invitational, the Super Bowl of wave performance. Hello everyone, I'm David Stanfield, and this is Hukipa Beach Park, the site of the O'Neill Invitational Wave Sailing Championships. It is the largest and most prestigious event of its kind, featuring 122 competitors from 12 different countries. And the superstars of the sport are here. Pioneers like Robbie Nash, Matt Schweitzer, and Mike Waltz. These world champions and all the sailors here set no boundaries. They consistently challenge their skills in the most demanding conditions. Here at Hukipa Beach, the sky's the limit. It's looking great. I mean, can't ask for much more. We've got wind, we've got waves, it's sunny. It's a perfect day for the beach. It looks good. Almost uh, every year it looks better than the last year. So there's always a whole lot of guys that are really coming on strong and looking good. So it's going to be tough. Everybody's really looking good, so um, I'm just thinking positively that that you know I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make it to the finals and and really try and do well in this contest. Four years ago. The legendary Jack O'Neill, the wetsuit wizard, first produced the Invitational Wave Sailing Championships. His purpose was to showcase the finest athletes in the sport and to make a positive statement for the future of sailboarding. The O'Neill family did just that. Today, the O'Neill Invitational is state-of-the-art competition and has become the most prestigious event of its kind. In windsurfing, I think this is the, the biggest event of the of the year. Uh, it's certainly the most spectacular, the, the, the wave riding. We're at the location here where we have the biggest, the biggest waves and, and the, the most consistent uh, uh, wind for, for windsurfing. It's a time of year we can get the, the top riders from all around the world. I think most, most all of the top uh, wind wave riders are, are here today. Just north of the sugarcane village of Paia is Hukipa Beach Park. Hukipa is not only invaded by the world's greatest sailboarders, but this half moon bay also attracts thousands of spectators. Well, the windsurfing sport has uh, tremendously helped Paia town in general and also the county of Maui. Uh, about three years ago, when O'Neill first brought in the first uh, world windsurfing championship sport here, it's grown tremendously and it's continually growing. The show is not only in the water, it's on the beach too. Spectators, photographers and enthusiasts will sit on this beach for hours at a time, completely mesmerized by one of the most dazzling spectator sports of our decade. And what you are about to witness is our exclusive highlights of the fourth annual O'Neill Invitational. In the name of Robbie Nash, two-time World Cup champion, defending title holder here at the O'Neill. And Robbie won his first world championship. $10,000 is just part of the reason to compete in the O'Neill Invitational. The other reason is competition. Wave sailing is composed of three basic maneuvers. First, there's jumping, sailing out through the surf and getting airborne. Second, there's wave riding, similar to surfing but with the added power of the sail. Finally, transitions, sailing from one tack to another. In other words, doing a 180 degree turn. The speed and maneuverability has given thousands of sailors a go for it attitude in the waves.
basically the uh, wave riding and the wave jumping and the uh, basically the aerial loops have uh, they've been perfecting them year after year and uh, it looks like this year they're actually pulling off a few of the loops and the highest jumps and just the most radical styling you could imagine. The most spectacular of the three scoring maneuvers are the jumps. Today sailors are getting higher, flying farther and getting more twisted in the air. Radical is the only word to describe the most difficult high-risk maneuver, the elusive 360-degree aerial loop. The loop is, is extremely dangerous. I wouldn't recommend anyone going out and just trying it. It's a, it's a extremely difficult maneuver and um, once you leave the wave and you're getting up 20, 30 feet in the air and looping around, it's, a, it's an exhilaration and a feeling of total weightlessness and actually you don't really have much control over what you're doing. You just let the wind carry you around and hopefully you end up landing back on top of your board and sail away from it. Timing is critical. If your timing is off, you'll go down, then possibly lose your rig, or even possibly lose your heat, and end up in the loser's bracket. But what's worse is being washed up on the reef. And no one here wants to be a rock star. The O'Neill Invitational consists of three classes, the men's, women's, and the masters. This year's contest started off with the masters. Uh, the masters is a nice way of saying you're over 30. Truth is, most of these guys have been around the surfing world for years. Now sailboarding is the new game in town. The masters are made up of the famous and the not-so-famous, like 32-year-old David Collignon, and 36-year-old surf star and bonsai pipeline great Jerry Lopez. Conditions were prime time for the Masters competition. Northeast trade winds blew through who keep it about 25 miles per hour, with up to 14-foot wave faces bashing the North Shore. These ideal conditions made for great semifinal action that featured one of Maui's favorite local sailors. Just right down the beach here, not more than a quarter of a mile, lives the world's fastest sailor. His name is Fred Haywood, and he owns two of the five world speed sailing records. Quite frankly, I really think I'm living my dream right now. I live on the ocean. I got a little place where I can get out through the rocks here right behind my backyard. And uh, I sail right up to Hokipa and do some wave sailing there. And then I do some speed runs down the coast. So to have this good of a sailing right in your own backyard, I couldn't imagine living anywhere else in the world. This is so perfect. Standing in at six foot three and 200 pounds, homegrown Fred Haywood hooked into the sport only six years ago. Four years later, he claimed a world speed sailing record in Weymouth, England. He did a speed run that averaged 37 and a half miles per hour. That's faster than most speed boats pulling a competition slalom water skier. I learned to sail from Mike Waltz, and after I got a little proficient on my sail, I realized that in the high winds, I would beat Mike Waltz, and he was the best in the world. And I thought, my gosh, I'm just a nobody, and he would, he would really notice it, and he says, gosh, Fred, you really have an advantage in the speed. And along with Arnaud de Rone, um, they convinced me to go into the speed trials in 1983 in Weymouth, where I set a world speed record of 30.82 knots. Fred's been a champion all his life, winning the National Backstroke Swimming Championship at the age of 17, followed by a silver medal at the Pan Am Games. Now at 35, he's not just a survivor. When 
When I set the world speed record, I could sense I was doing it because I could feel the vibration in the bottom of the board. It's almost as if it's a musical instrument, and the harder you strum it, the more sound you make. Well, the higher the vibration I could feel in the bottom of the board, I could tell I was going fast, and I, I knew I was breaking the record. Shortly after the O'Neill Invitational, Fred's world speed record was surpassed by seven international sailors in optimum conditions in France. I take one day at a time, that's Maui style. I, I, I live to work out that day that I'm living in, and um, sure, there might be some challenges ahead of going faster, riding more fun waves, or adventuring around the world chasing wind and waves, but um, for the time being, I just want to remain on Maui, keep sailing a lot, because I'm not sailing to go faster as much as I'm sailing to have fun. And if I can keep on fooling everybody and make a living having fun, that's the ultimate dream, I think. In order for Fred Haywood to continue living his Maui lifestyle, he'll most likely try to recapture the overall speed title. Today, at the O'Neill Invitational, for Fred, it was a disappointing fourth place. The final matchup came down to Jerry Lopez and David Collignan. I'm ready now. I'm gonna go get him. I feel good, I feel like I'm gonna win. Polygon dazzled the judges with his downwind bottom turns and aggressive style. This combination made the winning difference for Polygon. I was just trying to ride, ride waves without falling. I'm not a jumper, and uh, my wave riding, I just had to just keep, try to be consistent and uh, see how I could get by. Sailboarding is primarily dominated by men, but there are a few exceptions. Compared to the men, women do have certain disadvantages. The main disadvantage is the lack of upper body strength that is so important in handling high performance sailboarding equipment. Here at Hukipa, the women's stamina and endurance are constantly being challenged by the strong trades and powerful waves. Sometimes I made some bad mistakes and I get wiped out early in my heat and I end up swimming the whole time. But the contest, that can happen. You know, you only have eight minutes and you either have good luck or you have bad luck. So, can't let it get you down. The women do have more advantages than meet the eye. They're lighter, which helps them plane in marginal wind conditions. And they are, of course, agile. But you know, one of their greatest assets is their competition attitude. It's really emotional sometimes because when we first started competing in the waves and stuff, um, you know, we didn't, it was hard to compete against friends, you know, but you just get used to it and you just, and you separate the two totally and it makes it a lot better on your, on you and on all your competitors. You know, we don't want to feel bad vibes against anybody, so we make the best of it. You know, it's all in fun anyway, right? What? <laughs> Kelby had a work cut out for her at this year's O'Neill Invitational. Last year's overall winner was Peggy King, and she wanted to make it two in a row. The talented and classy Jill Boyer has been training for months for this season opener, and the consistent Debbie Brown, a top seed in any competition she enters. Three minutes into the seed.
the 20 women finalists, there were some exciting and dramatic moments. Like when 25-year-old Sean O'Neill, California's number one wave sailor, experienced firsthand the powerful surf of Hukipa. As she came through the loser's bracket, she had winning potential. But in a matter of seconds, her luck had changed for the worst. 25-year-old Sean O'Neill with seventh on the World Cup in 1984. Five foot five, 110 pound Lorraine McClay was airborne more than any other woman competitor. Lorraine came up through the bottom of the loser's bracket right through the semifinals. With her fantastic aerial control, she sailed to the top only to be succumbed by fatigue. Fatigue that held her to a fourth place finish. I did get tired, I was a bit overpowered, but in those kind of ways I felt I could give it my all rather than, you know, chicken out. Winds have now picked up to about 30, 35 miles an hour with stronger gusts. Pretty tough conditions, but the women are going to have to handle it. And the two are Kelbiana going against Debbie Brown. Just ever. No, it's not like that. We're, we've always, it seems to like me and Debbie are always in the finals together, you know, and so it's we're really good friends and it doesn't really affect us that way. You know, it's one thing on the water, we're like trying to do our best, but it's more like you're competing against yourself. Although Debbie and Kelby are good friends, Debbie might take winning a bit more serious. For me, it's visualizing a few heats in a row because I think there's a tendency to get tired after one or two heats and so you have to spend a lot of time visualizing yourself going through five or six heats at one time. And then you work on, on the feelings of winning and how great that feels and everybody congratulating you and also um, concentrating on performing your best ra rather than beating somebody. In 1983, Debbie Brown won this very same event and with her philosophy, she pictured herself winning today, and that she did. Yeah, I gave her this nail polish. Yeah, she did. She gave this, me. This. I, I won on this. I had this nail polish on. I did. It, it's the winning this is factor. Sort of like the gloves of. It is. It's the, go, the gloves of a champion. <laughs> I didn't have any on. We'll pass on, pass on the ceremonial <laughs> orange nail polish. I never shouldn't have given her that nail polish. <laughs> what do you get when you take the best wave sailors? from 12 countries with optimum sailing conditions, then given the green flag. Meet the Hukipa Air Force. This is a super session, the ultimate expression session, one of the many added features at the O'Neill Invitational. It offered $500, winner take all, for the most outrageous performance. The impossible is often untried, but here, they tried it all. Without a doubt, Wetter was better. The judges awarded 17-year-old David Wetter the Super Session title as the most outrageous performer. The 
rapid evolution of high performance sailing equipment has given these guys the confidence to push it to the limits. And it all started with pioneers like Matt Schweitzer. The equipment has changed dramatically. Back then we're on you know, 45 pound, 12 foot long boards, which are not very maneuverable. And you know, we get some equipment changes probably once every three months or something new in the sport. Keep waves, you need more of a, a board like this, which is a, an asymmetrical tail. And the boards that we sail at Diamond Head are more symmetric boards, and I use channels for grip. Well, I gotta get out there and try out this new fin. All right, good luck. See you guys. Bye. Hey. High performance equipment carries a high price tag. an aerial. The mask got caught under the board and snapped it off. That happens. <laughs> There are a special group of sailors, and they are called the loopers. They do the most spectacular thing in wave performance sailing. They do a 360 degree aerial loop off the wave. There's only about 12 of them in the world that can do it. And one of the most talented loopers there is, is a fellow by the name of Chris Lassen. I've been uh, attempting loops for about uh, the last year and a half, and um, had a pretty good deal of success lately. Uh, it's an extremely difficult maneuver in that um, you end up breaking a lot of equipment and, and smashing up your uh, boards and your sails and your body. He's broken a side of ribs, compressed all the vertebrae in his neck, and has gone through thousands of dollars worth of equipment. If it wasn't for Chris's artistic talents, he'd be in the poorhouse. I do have to be careful and hope I don't get uh, injured so I can continue my painting career, but um, the thrill of doing loops is, is uh, so great that I, I can't give it up. I just want to continue with it. I think I have a great advantage over a lot of artists in that I'm out of the water all the time and, and um, getting a first-hand experience is what's going on out there and trying uh, convey that through to my canvas. I can uh, paint in the morning till about 12 o'clock and then go sailing for the rest of the day and then come back and paint at night. And I get a lot of inspiration from windsurfing because of the contact with the waves and the wind and the ocean, all those elements I try to incorporate into my work. So it's, it's, uh, it's about the best thing I've ever gotten into, this windsurfing. An accomplished artist of collector status, Chris's paintings sail in the five-figure range to the likes of the Rockefellers. His work can be seen in galleries throughout the world. But it's the loop that seems to be his driving force. Loops are by far one of the toughest moves to pull off in sailboarding, and they are equally as hard to capture on film. But if you're Dan Merkel, ace motion picture cameraman, getting a loop should be a piece of cake. I've been filming the windsurfers doing what they call a loop, where they hit a wave and they go all the way around with their board and sail. Uh, you can only do it on the right wind conditions and the right wave size, and there's only a few windsurfers in the world who can do it. So I spent two months just to get about 20 minutes of it on film. The attempts, I've only seen personally about three of them made. So it's a very difficult maneuver, and to get it on film is very spectacular. Okay, Dan, so it's not a piece of cake. But when you have over 20 years behind you of filming in the most dangerous conditions at places like Hawaii's Pipeline and have experience with surfers and windsurfers dive-bombing you from all directions, you either get good or you die. To get the best shots, you have to put yourself on the line. You've got to be right out there in the impact zone, and you've got to have the windsurfers run you down. 
<laughs> that's, that's basically what it comes down to. And I always tell them, come close, come close. Sometimes they come a little too close, you know, and I jerk the camera back and whoa. But that's the best way to get those shots is just about have them run you down. Dan's daredevil tendencies, or madness, however you may look upon it, has made him one of the most sought-after wet cameramen in the world. Photographing windsurfing from the water is very dangerous. They're traveling in many different directions. Let's say a windsurfer is riding a wave in. Well, there's one coming out. <clears throat> so I have to have eyes in the back of my head. I've been hit in the legs and the back, and I've been hit on the head just softly a couple of times. the shots from the water here at the O'Neill Invitational that bring you that extra step closer to the action are in the hands of the Merc. The Invitational's most intense event is the men's competition. Out of the 77 international competitors, only two will make it to the finals. Here, the battle to the top bracket is vicious. These dudes will try anything to win. Son of the originator of windsurfing, Matt Schweitzer is a 16-year season veteran. At the age of 25, he owns 13 world titles. That was basically the first one to sail in the waves. And last year, I had a little bit of bad luck, just some stitches from a skeg, and I landed on my side and got an internal bleeding, pulled my kidney, and ruptured my spleen. But that's all over with. I won't do that again. <laughs> a three-year pro. He's been wave sailing for 10 years, and he's the East Coast of the United States is well represented by this man alone and all-around sailing talent, Ken Winter, is the consummate professional. The, the competition's too tough now. I have to live here on Maui in order to be competitive. So I, I'll go back to Annapolis sometime, but I have to retire first, I think. Up and riding, Ken Winter on the yellow and orange sail. Ken with a nice re-entry. Mike Waltz, winner of this event two years ago, is a 15-year veteran and is only 25. A pioneer who was the first to conquer Hukipa Beach. Yeah, I'm worried. <laughs> I'm always worried. There's about at least a half a dozen guys here that could take it. It just, you know, it all depends on the day. The wind, the conditions, the waves, and who's feeling best that day. Here's Waltz approaching this wave. He's on the white sail with the orange panel. Here's the wave. Watch Walt get outrageous air here. Big Japan's air wave sailing champion, Tetsu Hoshino, has three years of solid competition experience and is now beginning to match the moves of the hot Hawaiians, but is still in awe of the heavy hitters. What I want to do is live in Maui and every day go out sail. Not be loving us. <laughs> <laughs> it's too hard. <laughs> Most sailors don't know what it's like to win. For the amazing Robbie Nash, the current world champion and the defending O'Neill champion, he wins the majority of events he enters. And he's been winning ever since he captured his first world title at the age of 13. Now, eight years later, his sailboarding magic has even bewildered judges as to what exactly he pulls off. On a bad day, he looks good.
at the moment, I'm just trying to get the whole, the whole act together. My equipment's not really working the way I'd like it to. My jumps aren't really the way I want them to be. My wave riding's not the way I'd really like them to be. I've just got to get more coordinated you know, and all around. I don't have any one problem area. It's just everything's not quite there right now because of the lack of practice. And um, at the moment, there's probably 10 or 15 guys, all of whom could win the contest depending on how the conditions are or if they're having a good day, bad day, if their timing's on or off, and so on. Uh, there are really a lot of good guys now. Sharp with a great jump. Chop popping is Robbie Nash, and Robbie Nash has got a wall of water in front of him. Side slip, snaps off the curl, maintains, and continues. On the left is Alex Aguero. Watch Aguero with there. Nice, clean jump. In and out, scoring some big points. Outrageous. Winner on the left side pulls out of the way. It's Pudmore. Pudmore and Winner, both time aerials. Both attempting some aerial 360s, it looks like. In the semifinals, Robbie Nash sets a new precedent in competition history. Nash successfully completes the most difficult maneuver. He helicopters into a 360-degree aerial loop and sails away. Nash pumping for air. Yes! Robbie Nash completes it! Robbie Nash completes an aerial 360 helicopter. Incredible! Nash pulls it off. He saw what he had to do because Eric Sharp is very sharp out there. Ripping it apart and look at Alex Aguirre down the line. What a hot heat. Non-stop action here at the 1985 O'Neill. One-handed duck giant snaps out of the wave. Here comes Aguirre. He's got to make up. And he does. Oh, look at that. Feet apart. Perfect. A jump by Angulo, a great snapback. Now it's single eliminations. The final matchup, 16-year-old Mark Angulo, known affectionately as Baby Goo from the island of Oahu. He has outsailed all challengers, and now he meets the remarkable Alex Aguera. Aguera, originally from Florida, is yet another veteran at the young age of 23. He has dominated Hukipa's major events since October of 1984. Here comes Aguera, big hit! Men's, you're, look, you're looking at uh, Mark Angulo, Robbie Nash, or Alex Aguera, in my opinion, to be right up on top. My money's on Alex Aguera this year. I'd say the contest is going to come down to a, a duel between Robbie Nash and Alex Aguera in the men's division and Mark Angulo is going to be right in their third place, I would say. He gets pumped up a little bit. He says, God, Alex is falling. Oh, and that is a nice aerial re-entry, side-slipping, coming down sideways. One-handed duck jive snaps out of the way. Here comes a Gary. He's got to make up, and he does. Alex, undefeated, Hukukipa, the last two events, you're going for your third in a row, the Triple Crown. <laughs> How can you sail so perfect? Is it, is it local knowledge here? I know, local knowledge helps quite a bit here. It's, especially on days like today when it's really gusty and offshore. Some of the other guys look a lot better when it's lighter wind. And then when it picks up like this, it's a little tricky sometimes. So it is quite a bit of local knowledge. Angulo right on the edge and making everything work for him as Alex Aguera, a perfectionist. Aguera, ninth in the World Cup last year, third overall in the World Cup in 83. 
third in wave action. 23-year-old Alex Aguera, living in Paia. It's right down the matchup of the century here at Hukipa in the men's division. Alex Aguera, undefeated in competition so far, has got a challenger by the name of Robbie Nash, two-time World Cup champion. Robbie had to work his way up through the loser's bracket to meet Alex. This is it, a super heat. How do you beat Aguera? If anybody can today, it's going to be Nash. <laughs> nice transition to pick up that wave for Nash. Is Aguera scoring more points on that wave? What do you do? Back up with Aguera now. Here comes his snap. Snapping off the top, roller coaster down. Makes it down the line one more time. Very off the left for Aguera. Robbie Nash is considered the best all-round sailor in the world. His World Cup championships attested that fact. On the other hand, Alex Aguera seems to be unbeatable. If anybody can knock off Aguera, it's Robbie Nash. Yeah, I kind of glance back and see what he's doing. If he does something spectacular, I try and do something too. But if he keeps falling in, then you try and play a little bit more conservative. Unless it's somebody like Robbie who might pull something off ridiculous, so you have to keep going, <laughs> even if he does fall. And he, here comes Aguero with some air. Jeez! Another outrageous jump as he knows that jump. One more wave. And he loops it! He loops it twice! Goes around and now a double. Robbie Nash. Off the top aerial rebound and he makes it. Oh, beautiful! <laughs> Here's some pumps of air. Long jumps for Aguirre. Oh! And the wave breaks! Oh! He lost his nose and goes up and over. On the outside, Alex Aguirre picking up a clean wave as a horn blast. Woo! Aerial re-entry, non-stop, heads down the line, a great wave. Nash heads out for some air, upside down. I was feeling pretty good. I just wish I wouldn't have fallen in that one time. I had to go for a good swim. That might have cost it for me. I don't know. We'll find out here in a little bit. The problem was when Alex fell down, I couldn't do anything. There, were there, any was, waves. there weren't any waves, but um, I think you got it because your off the lips were just as good as his. Yeah, I was going straight up. If, you know, the, it was close, but they'll probably, if, if they give it to you, you're going to have to go. You got to loop. You got to try a loop again. Well, I couldn't week. that time. Um, I didn't have a chance. It was close, but I think they'll give it to you. Both Robbie and Alex were fantastic on the waves. Robbie pulled off on real transitions, and Alex performed breathtaking aerials. When Aguera lost his rig and went swimming, Nash really wasn't in scoring position. The judges awarded Alex Aguera with a split decision, 5-2. to two. Aguera, this year's O'Neill Invitational winner. Thanks, Rob. Don't lose it like I did. <laughs> <laughs> toughest competition was Robbie Nash. Definitely. In the first. Yeah, it was, that's the toughest one I came up against. He's like noted as the, the best in the world. And for a couple days there, while we were stalled, I knew that if I got through against Charlie Smith, I'd go up against him. And that was all I was thinking about was beating Robbie Nash for a couple days there. As soon as I got through with Charlie, I was lucky to beat one up there. <laughs> Sweeping high-speed turns, blasting off breaking avalanches of water, charging across hollow waves, the high-performance rigs and their pilots are seeking a vision of the future. And here at the O'Neill Invitational, you expect the unexpected.